All right, welcome everybody. We are just a couple minutes early here. We're excited to be getting started here shortly. And so as you're jumping on and joining, um, you can put any comments up in the chat if you're registered live with us there. Uh, for those of you that are joining us on any of our social media channels, you can go ahead and say hello, drop a comment there as well. Really excited to be sharing uh, this workshop this this week because how to double engagement and have more business conversations in 2024 is something that we're all excited about and is definitely going to be valuable and beneficial. I'm excited because we have um, our lead copywriter here and content marketing expert Ashley. So she's going to be teaching us some of that. Hey Randy, it's good to see you. As you're jumping on, for those of you that are registered, um, had registered ahead of time, um, or even those of you that are just joining from uh, watching us on Facebook or LinkedIn or X or wherever else, or YouTube, um, drop a comment and let us know where you're joining from. We always like to see where in the world folks are coming from. And uh, we will be getting here, started here in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna get live and make sure things work in here, but excited to, to, excited to share this. So good to see you, Ashley. How's your day going? Going good. good very excited to work on this so yeah I think with the advent of social media long long ago now in the beginning it was easy to put almost anything out there and get attention uh, but now as any platform becomes more sophisticated and develops more as we know it becomes a lot harder to stand out and be competitive and I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today because if you you know look at your marketing and say well, I know I need to put content out there, then that can become overwhelming because there's no strategy, there's no process, you're not sure what to talk about. But if you have a framework and you're able to walk through that, it makes being consistent, which we'll talk about more a little, a little later on, uh, a lot easier when there's a framework and a process. And so that's definitely something that will be valuable and helpful here. Um, and so like I said, as you're joining in, go ahead and uh, say hello in the comments or in the chat below there. I think I said hey to you, Randy. Hey, Melissa. Good to see you. Looks like, like we got a few more people joining in here, so we'll give it just another minute here, and then we'll dive in. Uh, we have been holding these weekly workshops for, I don't know, a few months now, a little while, and we recently did an update and changed our process here, so decided we'll stream these out so that they'll be accessible to folks anytime, um, and there'll be replays available, but I really love when folks show up wise, uh, live um, because that way you're able to ask your questions. We can answer them for you and we'll be able to um, interact. And I think we'll even be able to bring some folks on stage. Um, if you end up having questions and you want uh, you want us to you know, give you some live coaching, it looks like we will have time for that towards the end. We'll see how everything goes here uh, after we get through the content. But uh, otherwise, this is very excited, exciting, and happy new year to everybody. This is our first workshop of 2024. We will be having a few of these every month um, as usual. And so for those of you that are on the email list, make sure you pay attention to that. And uh, also, um, if you have not been to one of our workshops before, drop a comment, let us know. Um, we always like to welcome our, our first time visitors here. So awesome. So with that being said, let me up here and I am going to go ahead and turn it over to you Ashley let's dive into what you got here all right so hello everyone my name is Ashley like Gabe said I'm lead copywriter here at BME crew and today I have just been thinking about 2024 what are businesses owners or businesses in general looking to do even if you don't own your business quite yet or you're looking to do that in the future Everybody wants to have business conversations, right? Especially if they're streamlined and they're going to lead to money in our pockets, of course, and just those really good business conversations. So today I'm super excited to present on this topic that I'm super passionate about, which is how to double your engagement and business conversations using content in 2024. And if any of you have received our emails over the past week or follow Gabe on Facebook, I just wanna preface on how life-changing this workshop and these strategies can be. Um, especially with Gabe's Facebook post yesterday, he's been able to travel all over the world and still make money while basically sleeping, spending time with his family, getting those business conversations going because of these simple strategies. And so today I really just highly recommend unplugging, 
listening in, following along, because this is going to be something that you will definitely not want to miss. So first, I really just want to talk about content. For those of you who attended our last workshop, content can be many things, as Kayla talked about. It can be a video, a book, a social media post, an email, and truly anything that you want to create in order to satisfy a goal. And it's important because depending on your goal, your content can result in many different things. Maybe you're making an offer to get some new clients and get some sales. Maybe you're informing your current clients about a new service or a business change. Maybe you're just there to introduce yourself and that's okay. And whether you think so or not, every single person in this room has created content, whether it's sending an email, making a post on Facebook, creating your mission statement for your business, you've created content and you do have the creative ability to do it. So I know that many entrepreneurs come in and they're like, I don't feel comfortable creating content. I can't do it. I'm not creative. You can, you've done it before. And today I'm really just going to teach you how you can start fostering business conversations from that content that you're already creating. And that really starts with step one, defining your target audience. So when it comes to content, every single business owner has three different audience groups, something I really like to call the outer circle, the middle circle, and the inner circle. And when you create content for all three of these groups, this is how you foster those business conversations even while you're on vacation, you're not working, you're sleeping, you're spending time with family. And so I want to jump in and start by defining the outer circle. So this audience is the audience that does not know you. Maybe you came across their feed due to a repost, a share, a tag, a hashtag, but it's likely that they're seeing you for the first time or the first of maybe a few times. And so that being said, these people need a reason to trust you because let's be honest, when's the last time that you listened to a person you didn't trust? If you don't trust a person, you're not going to listen to a word they say because you know better, right? And so the goal of nurturing this audience is to share why they should trust you. Maybe you share some testimonials, your accomplishments, your client wins. And while these people are unlikely to buy, engaging with this circle is crucial to move your outer circle forward which brings us to the middle circle. So this audience, they've already seen your content and they already trust you, making them more willing to listen to you. So now your content should be more focused on how you can help them, which is a little thing I like to call education. Um, educational content is one of my favorites to write because you kind of get to talk about yourself and what you do, right? Everybody likes talking about their business. So talking about your products or services and how they can benefit them is crucial here because again why would you want to buy something if it doesn't benefit you i think when it comes to purchasing anything we all want to know how it can benefit us right and so they want to hear that and here you can also start to focus on breaking down objections so for example if you're a business owner of a plumbing company a common objection would be i don't need to get my pipes cleaned once a year like that's not something i need to invest in my pipes are working fine i don't need to get them checked so on and so forth i'm not going to spend the money to do that but a really interesting rebuttal to that statement would be sharing a costly aftermath of a drain disaster. And that could be solved with just a quick low ticket service, but instead they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars to get leaks repaired. Maybe mold has happened. Maybe they have to go underground and refix the entire pipe altogether. So while these people are somewhat likely to buy, they are still in the learning stage. So if they don't buy here, you don't be discouraged. Like this is really the education phase where you can hit on their objections. You can show them what you offer, how it benefits them. Once these audience members learn to trust you and about what you do, that leads to the final circle, which is the inner circle. So this audience already knows that they can trust you this point, they've seen your testimonials, they've seen your wins, they've seen your accomplishments. They've also seen how you can help them, how it benefits them, and they know what you offer and are now interested. This is when you go in strong and create a very strong offer. Once that offer is polished and delivered, these people will be ready to buy. They're just waiting for it. So now I want to go ahead and practice on a few. So I have this post here. And it says, my goal was to make the viewer feel like the cat was taking a selfie. Hashtag shot on iPhone. So in the chat, let me know, is Apple speaking to their outer, middle, or inner circle audience? I love, this. 
I love these examples, Ashley, because you're right. As soon as we start to understand kind of what what circle we're speaking to, it's a lot easier to write the content, and it's also easier to recognize what's you know what's going to work depending on what you know stage somebody's at, and kind of what if they're top of funnel, middle funnel, or bottom funnel is another way to kind of think through this. Yes. Um, and, and this is a great example. So we've got a couple. Got one up here from Sherry. And we've got another one from Warren. It says outer or middle. So what, what is it, Ashley? It is the outer circle. And the reason why is because there's a testimonial here, right? We aren't asking them to do anything. We aren't showing them the benefit. We are giving them an informational section about a new product. We aren't educating them. We're simply saying, this is a person that was able to do this really cool thing, hashtag shot on iPhone. And so that's really exciting with the outer circle. Cause again, they're leveraging their testimonials in order to get engagement. And of course I know it's Apple and it's a cat. And of course I would like it even if I didn't read the caption, but they got tons of likes on it. Um, and that's really a good way to start to get engagement and show people this person had an awesome experience and created this awesome photo using the iPhone. So let's move on to the next one. This says ring in the new year with a wellness refresh. And this is from Amazon. So which, which is this outer middle or inner circle, put your ideas in the comments there. We'll throw those up and see, see what our guesses are. And then we'll uh, see what Ashley says here. So any other guesses on this one? You can comment um, for those of you that registered and are live with us. And of course, for those of you on social media, you should comment there as well for us. So, all right, let's see, we got a couple of guesses here. So there's Keith says middle, Randy says middle, what, what do you, uh, Warren says middle, are we, and Shanna says inner, and Melissa right. says middle. All right, what do you, what do you think, Ashley? Most of you guys are catching on. You guys are doing really well. And I know that the CTA here can be very confusing. It is actually middle circle. And while there is the offer there saying view shop, they aren't giving a very strong offer that's going to drag people in, right? And actually, their photo is doing a lot of the talking here. They're saying ring in the new year with a wellness refresh. They aren't telling anybody to do anything. They're just showing them these new products that they have. And they're showing them, hey, like this can help you refresh your wellness. It's really educating. It's a very simplified version, but it shows how simple your post can be and still get that engagement and really satisfy that middle circle audience. So moving on to the next one, how about Ford? So this says, my favorite thing to do, or I'm, my favorite thing I'm doing is helping local businesses build out their brick and mortars. With the new 2024 Ford F-150 hybrid, it's really nice to know I can work at any of my job sites and not have to worry about things like a workbench or power. This is a testimonial. What do you guys think? Yeah, so outer, middle, or inner circle. What, do you, what does everybody think here? Because this is a great example of I really like the um, I really like all the different pictures they put in the post. Yeah, it's a great testimonial. So Warren said outer, Keith said outer, Randy said middle, and Sherry said inner for Ford fans. What do you think, Ashley? It, it could be an inner for Ford fans, Sherry. That's definitely true. But this is actually an outer. And the reason is, again, we're showing them that people are satisfied with Ford, right? There's a testimonial. They're raving. They're even talking about the different things that they can do. It's helping them run their business, which is huge, right? Especially for Ford to say, like, I help these people run their businesses. Um, so this is going to be an outer circle. And a lot of the times when you guys see testimonials, most of them will likely be outer circles, not saying all of them will, but again, leveraging that and there's no call to action here. It's really just informing them and building that trust. If other people trust them and they're sharing that, they're trying to build that trust saying, I have photos, I have a testimonial of this person who's able to leverage forward to do this. It's building that trust. So last but not least, we have this final one from Lowe's. It says, future DIY pro in the making. 
we're rolling out a new badge incentive program for our kids workshop where your mini builders can climb the ranks to earn the title of senior builder and receive a free cobalt, cobalt tool bag when they attend 12 workshops. Get all the details at the link in our bio. So do we think this is outer, inner, or middle? That's a cool program. They're starting to get to the alpha generation right there, which I've been <laughs> talking about a little bit more. So yeah, which one is this? We've got got to be inner, says Warren. John says inner. Melissa says inner. Mandy says inner. Are we getting close, Ashley? Oh, you guys are spot on. It is inner. And the reason why, again, is because you have that strong CTA. They're showing them what exactly they're going to get. And the thing that I think is important to pay attention to is Obviously, these young kids aren't on social media. They've already built that trust and that knowledge to where Lowe's can create something for children and parents aren't going to be like, whoa, like I'm not going to send my kid to this random place, right? So you guys did an amazing job. And now I want to kind of move on and talk about, now that we talked about all these circles, how do you know which one you should be engaging with, right? Because there's all three and it's really interesting. The answer is you don't. And here's why. So there is no number of people that you can engage with online. In fact, engaging with all three groups is necessary to bring people from the outside in. It's almost like a little line or like a funnel like Gabe was talking about. And today, every single attendee is going to walk away with personalized content to start this process, which is super exciting. We've been doing this with Gabe's social media for quite some time now, been getting engagement. And so you guys can start this process, whether you guys want to post it on social media on email, create a short form video. You can do this on all types of content. So do not be turned off if you think it's just social media because you can do this on essentially any channel. So let's start with the formula for outer circle. And remember, these are the people that you want to gain trust with. In the examples, I showed you guys testimonials, but I also wanna show you a formula that has especially worked for Gabe on his social media. So first I'm gonna kind of share my example of what I wrote for Gabe, and then I'm going to go through the formula that I have here. So it says, I've generated over 50,000 leads last year for my business, which has generated multi seven figure revenue years. No, I don't spend billions on advertising, employ hundreds of people or have a billion dollar product. Here's how I've done it and enjoy working every single day. One, I focus on quality results. Instead of chasing after the latest trends, I focus on creating the best product and services that will truly solve my clients' problems. Two, I employ the right people and technology. More workers don't always mean better work. I strive to hire people who have the skills and experience necessary for the job, as well as a positive attitude and passion for what they do. Three, I invest in relationships. It takes time to build trust, but it's worth it in the end. I always make sure to maintain good relationships with my clients, whether through regular communication or extending special offers down the line. It pays off in repeat business and referrals. Thank you for reading and following. So if you take a look at the formula that I created on the side, it says one results, two objection, three steps, and four thank you. And again, since we are really working with the outer circle here, we're trying to build their trust. So of course, we're gonna start with results. This is what I've been able to do for people. And once you kind of show others, how people have benefited sharing those testimonials, sharing those wins. That's really what's going to draw people in and listen. Because if Gabe was just like, I have this product, here you go. No offense, Gabe, people like you, but I'm not sure if everybody's going to click on that. And so starting off and really building that trust with people is what's going to help people really learn to trust Gabe and learn to know, know about him. So we start with those results, right? I've generated over 50,000 leads last year for my business, which has generated multi seven figure revenue years. Next, we have an objection because sometimes you can put out results and people will be like, oh, well, he must have, have a massive team or have billions to spend on advertising, or maybe his product is a billion dollars he has to spend or sell one a year and he's fine. So you make those objections, right? No, I don't spend billions on advertising, employ hundreds of people or have a billion dollar product. And you're giving steps. Here's how I've done it and enjoy working every single day. That's when we have the steps. I focus on quality results. I employ the right people. I invest in relationships. And then finally, since these are the outer circle people and these people are just learning to trust you, instead of giving a hard sell or a CTA, just say, hey, thanks for reading and following. Because again, there are impulse buyers, which is why we do the other circles. But sometimes people just need to learn to trust you and that's okay. And for those of you who know a little buyer psychology in here, if you kind of take a look deeper into the steps, you will see kind of benefits of working with Gabe, right? 
He employs the right people. He makes sure that he gets the job done. He focuses on quality results instead of flashy campaigns. So it's really interesting to kind of weave those circles together. But right here, we're really focusing on the outer circle. So next, let's move to the middle circle. And remember, these people trust you, but they need some education. So here is what I wrote for Gabe. Why do you need marketing if you're already successful? Let's run the numbers. The average small business in the US has around 200 customers. Let's say that each of those customers spends $1,000 a year with your business. That's a total of $200,000 in revenue. Now, let's imagine you decided to invest 10% of that revenue into marketing to establish yourself as an industry leader and attract more customers. That same investment can bring you an extra 100 customers a year, bringing in an extra $1,000 of revenue. That's $100,000 in revenue each year that you can put back into your business or treat yourself to something nice. If you want to learn how we achieve these results for our clients in 12 months or less, DM me revenue for a copy of my book, Five Gear Marketing. So the formula here is a little bit different. Again, these people already trust us, right? So now we're really trying to focus on not only talking about the benefits of working with us, but hitting on those objections, right? Because maybe somebody follows Gabe because they trust him and they're like, oh, like maybe I'll work with him if my business starts to go downhill. But something we always like to talk to people about is you can use marketing even if you're already being successful, right? Because it creates that circle of life. It helps you bring more revenue in to either spend on yourself, invest in your business, grow. And so we start with that objection, right? The objection is, why do I need this if I'm already successful? Then we have a story, right? We tell the story about this is how many customers an average business has. This is how much they spend. And we use ballpark numbers because you don't want to confuse people. Finally, we have the result. So that's an extra $100,000 in revenue each year that you can put back into your business or treat yourself to something nice. And then finally, we do have a call to action for these people. But something that you might notice is that instead of having a hard sell of like, jump on a call with me, let's do this, like, let's get in a chat, which you can try and you can do trial and error with that. The call to action here isn't so hard sell. It says, if you wanna learn how we achieve this, DM me and I'll give you a free copy of my book. So again, we're really trying to educate them still. This is still the education phase and you still can get some impulse buyers here that are like, yeah, actually, I just wanna work with you and that's awesome, right? We all want that. But this is the second phase. Now that they trust you, it's time to educate. Once they trust you and are educated, we move on to the inner circle, which if you guys remember, this is really where we try to do those hard sells with those awesome offers. So let me read the example I created for Gabe. Looking to take control of your business growth? I've helped 10,000 plus business owners break free from static revenue streams and generate six plus figures a year using a simple three-step marketing strategy designed for hardworking entrepreneurs looking to take their business to the next level. I'm only taking six more clients this month to help do the same. Interested? Comment or DM me info and let's chat to see if we're a fit. So here, we're really starting with that desire slash pain point, taking control of their business growth, breaking free from that static revenue stream with their business and generating six plus figures a year. Also, we have the offer, right? We tell them about the three-step marketing strategy designed for hardworking entrepreneurs looking to take their business to the next level. The offer also in turn kind of goes with the desire and pain point, right? We're offering them the ability to break free from that static revenue stream. Next, I always like to create a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out by saying, I'm only taking six more clients this month to help do the same. Because again, you wanna create some scarcity there. You wanna make it seem exclusive to work with you. And then finally, you have the call to action. Here, I wrote comment or DM me info and let's chat to see if we're a fit. So unlike the other one, we were still educating. Here, they're ready to chat. We're giving them a direct action. Instead of saying, check out my landing page, we're saying comment or DM me info. We're giving them step-by-step -step instructions so they know exactly how they can follow through and essentially get this offer, right? So now I'm going to kind of take the next 10 minutes and I want you guys to choose one of the three circles and write a post using the formula on the screen because I want everybody to walk away with something to try. And this is gonna be an awesome opportunity to just sit there, really hone in, take a look at these different things. If you want me to go back to a screen so you can see the example, I'm more than happy to do that. But we're gonna be working on this. If you finish early, feel free to continue working on another circle because it's just more free content for you and you're already here taking the time. If you want to go grab a drink of water, use the restroom. And then when we come back, myself, 
Gabe and our marketing strategy team will pick a few people to review their content right on the call. So you're going to be getting some expert copy editing and advice for free, which is super exciting. And if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to message right in chat. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. So yeah, well, it is like 1.23 Eastern right now. I am going to put a little music on for the next 10 minutes here and right at 1.33, we'll come back. And for those of you that registered, um, you are able to come on and get feedback. So if you're going to want feedback, you can put comments in, but I'll go ahead and put some music on. And I'm actually going to, um, Ashley and I will step off the screen for a couple of minutes, but we'll be watching comments. And then if any comments or questions come up, we'll pop back in. But these workshops are really designed for you to actually walk away with a valuable asset. So I know this might be a boring part of the stream if you're just watching. So I want to encourage you to actually stop and choose one of these. And don't edit as you go. Don't judge yourself. Just write what comes to mind because that's the best way to start building content out. All right, so we're going to dive in here and take the next 10 minutes here.
So we've got about three minutes left or so here. So if you are done and you're live in the workshop with us here, you can comment or if you're on social watching, it's awesome to have you here. Let us know how you're doing. Like I said, we got about three minutes left and then we're gonna dive into the next part of the workshop here. at our 10 minute mark here um, and if you'd like to come on and have anything reviewed just drop a comment in um, Shanna if you're up for that I did shoot something to you in Facebook Messenger we'll st we're still learning a couple of the kinks with our new platform here um, but I will turn it back to Ashley and we'll see what people come up with and then we'll bring anybody on if they want to yeah of course so now I really just want to encourage somebody to come on, share, you'll get the opportunity to share it with us. We can go through and really help you break down what your post was, your circle, help give you suggestions. And again, once this is polished, this is ready to go, ready to post content that you can really post right after this. And while it may not spark the first business conversation, it'll definitely give people something to look out for, depending on what circle you chose, right? Maybe you chose the outer circle and it might spark a business conversation. So do not pass up this opportunity because this is something that we're really excited and we're all here to do. And so does anybody want to come on? Um, we can definitely help out with that. Awesome. Look, I think Shanna's jumping on here. We have a little bit of a lag between our stream and when they hear it, just a little bit, which is normal. Um, but yeah, just like Ashley said, if there's anybody else um, who would like to come on and get their copy reviewed, go ahead and just drop a comment in and we will get a link to you one way or the other um, because this is one of the best things that you can do with your copy and so while we're, while we're waiting here um, to see who else is going to jump on um, one of the things that we do internally and i would encourage everybody to do this as well is to we call it tpi which is two-person integrity is what that stands for and 
one of the best ways that you can improve your copy is for you to draft it and not try to self-edit while you're writing. That's a great way to mess up your copy, but just really write more free form and like what's coming to mind. Then of course you can go back and edit it. It's a great idea to read aloud what you have um, that you've written. And that's a great way to self-edit after you've kind of gone through the creative process. And then after that, hand it to somebody else. It could be a partner, a spouse, somebody else in the business. It could be a, a younger person. Like it's always, I always enjoy handing my copy to like a 12 or 13 or 14 year old and seeing what, um, you know, what they think of it because they're going to tell you pretty honestly, like, oh, I get it. Here's what you're doing. Like one of the things I ask when I have somebody um, younger readers, I say, can you read this for me and tell me, tell me what it means to you? That's literally all I'll say like no frame, no, like, here's what I want you to say any of those things. Um, and so when you do that, you can do that with a younger person. You can do that with somebody else that's, that's willing to be um, candid. Then they will be able to actually give you, you know, direct feedback on, you know, what it is because they're going to be candid with you. So getting a second person to look at what you've written is a great way early on to figure out how to communicate well. But don't let that stop you from posting. Post and you're going to get feedback from your audience too. So... Awesome. So we have Shanna here, and we'll drop the slides for a minute. Thanks so much for jumping on, Shanna. I appreciate you. And then, John, I'm going to email you a link, John, so you can go ahead and get ready to join. Um, but, Shanna, you can just read what you wrote because I know you handwrite, which is great. And then I'll have Ashley help you, okay? And I can't hear you yet, but is your, is your mic muted, not your computer? Like, is the button on your mic flashing by chance? Because you have the same microphone as me. No. Yep. Now I can hear you. Oh, okay. Good to go. Oh, no, I'm... Yep. I'm good. Okay. You're all set. Yep. And if for some reason you have the other viewing tab open or Facebook open, you may want to close that because you might get us talking to you twice. Whatever you have open that you're on camera with now, that, that may help you too. Okay. There. Am I... Okay, now I'm good. Okay, yeah, I had two tabs. So, That's Gabe, you know me on technology. I had two tabs. It was crazy. Okay. You got it. Go for it. Okay. Um, so, so I'm just reading my thing, right? Is that cool? Yeah, just let us know, Shanna, what circle you chose, and then feel free to read it just so I can get some context there. Okay, perfect. So I did inner circle, and I have my own business as a life coach and a healer. Um, and this is for, like, my group program. So I just said – um. Uh, learn to reclaim your power from the stressors and energy drainers in your life. Join this incredible group of women as you embark on an eight-week journey of self-discovery and personal empowerment. This small group has limited spaces to ensure deeper connection, personalization, and one-on-one -on -one attention. Empowered Group Coaching is a sanctuary for connection, support, and healing. No more settling. It's time to prioritize yourself, your aspirations, and your dream. DM to join today. That is awesome, Shanna. You're definitely a copywriter at heart. Um, I really love, I loved when you said specifically, we have only a few amount of spots left because we can get that deeper connection. Because sometimes some people can be turned off by like, we only have six spots left. But you explained why, which I think is awesome. I do think there's some aspects where you are sitting between middle and inner circle. And that's just because you do a little bit more educating. And at this point, they might already know that, right? Where you spoke about, I think it was towards the end where you started speaking about what exactly you do. Um, so even if you wanted to cut that and just make it a really strong, quick offer, because those people already know what you do, right? They know how you can help them. So saying, this is my offer. Here's why you should join. You're giving them that FOMO. We are only offering this amount of people and then that call to action, but that was perfect, Shanna. Thank you. <laughs> And, and the thing that's been the most helpful for me with the Shanna is I tend to just write whatever I feel like it or just to one circle or like no plan or strategy if I'm not paying attention. And one thing that you can do as you think about doing this is depending on you're super consistent with your content, Shanna, because I see it all the time. Um, you can think about dedicating a day a week for each circle. So I don't I don't know how often you post. I just know you post consistently because I see it all the time. So I don't know if you have a schedule already, but if you, for everybody and for you too, Shannon, because you're already in, in flow with this, you could go like Monday is outer, Wednesday is middle, Friday is inner. Um, so those are, those are the types of things that 
I like to think about too is like how can I take a framework or a tool and then be you know be even more consistent with it. Um, so that I think that that's excellent, and I agree with what Ashley shared there. That'll that'll definitely be helpful for you. I really like that three day thing. That's like really helpful because I don't have a lot of strategy yet. So that's like really to have more structure is going to make it easier. So thank you for yeah. that. And then do I get exited? Do I have to click something? I will drop you off and then you can go ahead and click back to the other one. You'll be able to hear us. So it's not echoing on you. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah. It's good to see you. Thanks. All right. Um, I think John's jumping on, but we have some in the comments here. I'm going to see how these read. Okay, cool. They do read. So these are in two parts. Keith has one, and then also Melissa wrote one for the same um, thing, which is super cool. So um, I am wondering. Uh, okay, good. Inner circle. There we go. So yeah, go ahead. You can read this and analyze it. Actually, sorry, I was not, not following, but I got it now. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So it says inner circle part one. So again, they're writing to the audience that already knows them, trust them. So this says the start of a new year always brings excitement and renewed energy. However, the drag of the drag of the year and costs and one-off payments we all have to make to make require that might be a little typo there um, to really hunker down and do what we can to save some money over the coming months. We know that the rise in storage rates are not something you wanted to see from your storage partner. So we've stepped up and are providing a store lock, the ability to lock in your 2023 rate for an additional three months. We're only allowing 20 members into store lock. So click the link below to get the details in your spot now. This is awesome. This is really awesome, Keith. And I know that we've spoken on the side about this a little bit, but for everybody else watching, as you can see, there is a little bit of information here, right? But since this is exclusive to this specific group of people, it is okay to give them a little bit more information because we're saying, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what we're providing. We're only allowing 20 members. So click the link below to get the details in your spot now, which I think is awesome. Um, and then can you go back to part one for me, Gabe? Sorry. Yeah. And John, I saw you on for a minute, but you popped back off. So go ahead and just wait in there if you hear me. And uh, I'd love to bring you on stage. Awesome. So the start of the year, new year always brings excitement and renewed energy. However, the drag of the year and cost and one-off payments we all have to make require us to really hunker down and do what we can to save money over the coming months. Something I'd like, really like to encourage you to do, Keith, is flip this to be more positive in a way. Because I do think like the start of the year is really exciting, but the drag of the year, now we're going to be asking you to you know, make a payment. I would like for you to spin this a little bit more into a really strong like opportunity of an offer, right? Because paying up front doesn't always have to be a negative thing, making those payments, because now they can really start off the new year without having to worry about those payments. They get to save money because they get to put more things in or more money into their pocket for over the next coming months because you are increasing those storage rates. So that's the only thing I'd really encourage you to do. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you can test these different things. Maybe you want to send one email where you do put it out as a pain point. Maybe you want to send one that puts it out as an opportunity. But nonetheless, Keith, you did an awesome job here. And this is a great follow up to our conversation we had the other day. So that's awesome. awesome. Anything from you, Gabe? No, I agree with you. I think that's good. And we have John Cooter. And so we'll bring him on. And then Melissa, um, you said yours is part of a different one. So we're definitely going to bring your, we'll put your comments up to Melissa. Hey, John. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you today? Okay. Yeah, I jumped off because I, I did exactly what I heard you say might happen when I joined. I, there were, I, I could hear Ashley twice. Okay. And I couldn't find the volume control to turn That's that okay. No problem. Sorry about that. We're still playing on our new, new, at our new sandbox here. So, so what, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll have Ashley walk you through here, but tell us what circle you're writing for, and then you can read off what you wrote. Okay. Yeah, this was for the outer circle. And uh, yeah, totally off the cuff, just, you know, made it up off you know <laughs> as we went so um so i've learned to take so much pressure off myself and enjoy my work and my life to a degree that i never believed was possible i spent most of my life as a committed perfectionist i didn't even see it as perfectionism i thought i had a higher i had higher standards than everyone else and i was proud of that but there was a big price to pay for all that quality i was very hard on myself and almost as hard on my loved ones nobody felt they could live up to my expectations not even my perfectionist parents I thought that was just how I was wired, and you might also. That's That makes it easy for us to decide that it can't be changed. But the truth is, it's just a group of habits, and habits can be changed. I've done it, and I can show you how. 
Here's a hint. It isn't through amazing willpower or brute force. Leave a comment or DM me for specifics on how to change the habits that aren't working for you and get a new sense of peace. I loved that, John. That was awesome. I like how it went from storytelling into your little bit of an offer, right? Because you're saying this is what I can do. This seems to be more outer and middle circle for me because not only are you um, showing that like, you know, they can trust you, you shared your life story, you were vulnerable, but you also did explain a little bit what of, you, of what you do. And it's okay to everybody who's watching to kind of go between the circles a little bit. That's the entire purpose of this workshop is there. These are the main circles, but you can go in between. So John, this is an awesome, awesome example of going in between those different circles. And I think it's perfect. I Great. no feedback on that unless you have anything Gabe. but I really liked that. I just liked how um, you build up like the problem, the pain, the issues. And then you said, oh, it's a simple solution. This is just a group of habits. That's immediately what caught me because I was like, oh, well, well I'll message you because if it's just habits, I theoretically, I can change some habits, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I thought that was well-crafted. And I agree with Ashley um, and for everybody, of course, here in the workshop and, and watching this, you can mix circles, no problem sometimes. And you can also do something with this, John. You could post it as is. And then you could also try to write two versions out of it and make it outer and middle. And I also want to point out something to somebody or to everybody that uh, I realized years ago when I was working with this nonprofit in New York City called Do Something. Um, it was this like more like youth driven nonprofit where they help people go out and volunteer and, and you know, help change the world and do something good. They we donated a ton of server hardware and did some strategy for them years ago. And they introduced this concept to me called social media amnesia. And they said, we can post the same post, the same meme today and people will comment and love it. It'll be great. And three days later we can post the same meme again and we will get the same people commenting and engaging. And it just, and I ended up going and I was, we weren't running their social media. Then we did a lot more tech and web stuff back then because this was, 15 years ago or long, long time ago. Um, but we're, we've developed a lot more as a, co a company, but I always remember that. And then as I've watched social media really become an amazing platform to leverage and, and market on, it's really important to catalog your winners and use them again. Because the people, even your, your raving fans will love to hear your, your see and see it again. And people that didn't see it or ignored it, and you'll have new audience members. So collect the ones that get a good engagement, that get you messaging and things like that, and use them over and over. That's something that I've had to always remind myself of because I always falsely think, oh, I just I can start from I need to start from scratch and do it again. And it's better to have a catalog of winners because you can repost them over and over. So it's a really good point. Yeah, it's it's really easy to get stuck in that. Well, I've got to say something new every time. And yeah. It's better. <laughs> Repetition is what really gets the point across. <laughs> exactly. It's all in a sense like it's better to chant your mantra than try to make up a new mantra every day. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, John. It's great Thank to see you. you. Thank you, John. And if you haven't already, short form video content, I feel like you would do fantastic with that. Just the way you come across with the screen and your background and stuff like that. And for everybody listening, this can be leveraged in short form video. This can be leveraged over email. It doesn't just have to be social media. That's what we use today is an easy way to kind of kick things off. But following the same structure, your audience is everywhere. So yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, John. I'll pull you out of the studio and you can join the other way again. It was awesome to have you on. All right. We have a couple from um, Melissa. So I will throw up her part one and part two here for you, Ashley, and you can read and go through those. Awesome. So it says, are you struggling to find a prep center that is easy to work with, has fast turnaround times, and easy to understand pricing? Your experts here at Superhero Freight have heard you and responded. If you've been shopping around for a prep center that has lightning fast support, the best turnaround times in the industry, easy to understand price structure, and a global presence, and Zone Prep works this year. And we need the next one. Thank you. Participation will be limited so that we can maintain capacity and world-class service for every customer. Fill out the following tell me more form and we will reach out to you right away. So again, you guys must be all copywriters at this point. So you guys are really confusing me. I'm just saying you guys are doing really good. Um, Melissa, this is awesome. And again, I do think this, this falls between the middle and inner circle a little bit. Because again, you're sitting here, you're explaining them. This is how it can benefit you. This is we're educating you. This is what we do. And so it's blending with the 
um, inner circle a little bit. And that's totally okay. Because again, you can use the CTA with the middle circle stuff and still get people to buy, which is awesome. So I would recommend for this, Melissa, especially doing this, posting this, like Gabe said, but creating a really short, strong offer, because now that these people are educated, essentially saying, this is what we do. This is my offer. And reach out if you're, you're interested or something along those lines. Because again, this is more middle circle to me and it kind of sits between the two. And so I would recommend posting this 100% because it's awesome. But also creating just a very strong, blunt offer that people can really pick up on without the education because they already know you, they already trust you, they already know what you can do, I think would be an awesome, awesome fit. But that you guys are doing really well. Excellent. So thank you, Shanna and John and Keith and Melissa. Um, for putting putting your copy in there as well. Either way works great, and I really appreciate that we had a couple of folks come on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to you, Ashley, or anything else you have left here, okay? Yeah, and I will be asking Gabe if these are posted, so please post them, I'm excited to hear. And if you guys are part of BME Crew, please let me know how it goes, because I'm super excited to hear how those go. But moving on to the next one, again, you guys did an amazing job. And in order to wrap things up, I have a few reminders here. So. Number one, you can and will have a prioritized circle, and that's okay. So for example, if you're just starting out, you're a startup, you just created your business, you may work on your outer circle more than others so people can learn to trust you. Because again, like we mentioned earlier, people really won't listen to you talk unless they trust you, right? Because when was the last time you listened to somebody that you didn't trust? And so that's okay. The goal is to ultimately create that balance between the three circles because you don't want to just prioritize the inner circle. You don't want to just prioritize middle or outer because it's almost a funnel, as Gabe talked about. You want to make sure you constantly have that funnel of people coming in, and it's going to basically be a whole cycle of people just learning to do this, learning to do that, and really getting that offer in. And you can go ahead and kind of create your strategy like on Monday, I'm going to speak to my outer circle. On Wednesdays, I'm going to speak to my middle circle. And on Fridays, I'm going to speak to that inner circle. So that way you're constantly creating different content for these, those different circles. And you always want to still post to those three circles because even if you are a startup, right, there's such thing like people like me who are impulse buyers and maybe somebody will buy. Even if your, your company's just starting, even if you don't really have your offer yet, you can still create that business conversation. If you don't have that specific thing, like if you're interested, let's chat and you can get them on a waiting list and really build that excitement for your brand that might not even be launching yet. Number two is personalization goes a very long way. So with the development of AI and honestly, just way too many people on the internet, your personality must shine through your posts. So share a picture of yourself, your dog, your interests, create a video, show your personality because at the end of the day, Personality does sell in a sense, and this is especially important with content creation. So even if your post has nothing to do with your dog, if you post that picture of your dog and you have that long content, it's going to draw the eye because it's not just some long, lengthy post. You have this other thing here to really support and show them your personality. If you do want to reference your dog, that's great. Like saying, if you want to chat with me or my dog, like feel free to comment below or something along those lines. Um, the final thing, content creation is experimental, so have fun. Whether you choose to send emails, make a post on Facebook, create a video, there is no limit to how much you can create. So my huge biggest recommendation is try new things, be weird, find out what works for you. Really let your personality shine and pay attention to the engagement, right? If you see that one's getting a lot of engagement, like Gabe said, reuse a post, see what you did there, analyze it, and also just check back and see okay, which circle do I really need to focus on this season? But before I kind of wrap up and hand everything off to Gabe, does anybody have any questions for me? Yeah, thank you, Ashley. And I, I like what you said there a minute ago, and I want to highlight that again. Um, because if, you, if you're not even sure what picture to put up, it's better to put up any random picture and kind of make a joke about it than have no picture. And so I know that's um, that's something that sometimes you may see people do. Like other, I know I see people do that, and I read their posts, and like I've even seen people said 
I've even seen people do it this way, which I, your suggestion is better actually, but it still helps if they're like random post, random picture for engagement is the last line of their post, which makes me laugh. But like, I like yours of like, or you can talk to my dog about it, but it's really good to have pictures of you, your pets, your family, if you're, if you're comfortable posting those types of things, but it really is important for you to have um, your own personality and brand out there because yeah, making another AI image or something that's over designed or something like that, we've tested it and, and, Everybody here that's followed, you know, that I've been friends with and we follow each other for a while, you've probably seen me test this stuff. And some of that stuff can work in some situations and other times it's not going to work. And so we want to see you, your face, who we're actually dealing with. If you have, you know, if you have, if it's just you working your company, of course you can post up there. Um, you know, I mentioned Shanna earlier because she's super consistent and I see her face almost every day. Um, and I love it. And so like she puts good stories out, she puts good posts out and she's always got good photos going out. And that's a huge part of why she gets engagement. I have tried to, um, you know, just put out like very designed images or make weird AI images and nobody cares. Humans know what other humans look like and you won't be able to trick that for a while in my opinion. And I know that counter to all the AI stuff you're hearing, but we can recognize the energy from a photo a lot faster than we can something that's just kind of made up by a computer. So that's definitely, definitely something important as well. And uh, Keith has a question, so I'll pop that up here for you, Ashley, and I'll let you take that. So for everybody, the question is, what are your thoughts on using our personal Facebook profiles to start posting for our business? We've never done that up to this point. So it's really interesting you say that, Keith, because personalities really come out in personal Facebook profiles. I know that we're doing that for Gabe. And sometimes, you know, when you're trying to interact with a brand and there's not a face behind it, it can be hard to really get that personalization coming through. So if Keith, like you start talking about it and starting those business conversations with people and they see the face and they see the personality, I'd highly recommend doing that. Business pages can work, but in order to get those more personal business conversations that we're talking about here where people can DM you, right? And talk to you. Because if you say, oh, DM me in the chat on your business page, they aren't gonna know who they're DMing. Um, so it's definitely something I recommend, Keith, as long as you're comfortable with that. And I, I really like that. But do you have anything on that game? Yeah, and then we'll, um, Kayla's got a question we'll throw up here too. Thanks, Kayla. My my thought is I agree with what Ashley said, Keith, and I, and you have been given the formula today, and we'll post these slides um, as well in BME, uh, in school, in our community for BME crew and anything you need. Of course, you know, you've got the team to help, but being that you haven't posted a lot, it's from what your question here says, Keith, you haven't posted before, um, you and Melissa, it sounds like this is a perfect opportunity to use all three circles. And you could even run something more like temporarily, Keith, I might do outer circle content um, a couple times a week for like three to four weeks and then move into the three circles each week from like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like we talked about. The only reason for that is since you've never talked about it, you can use story, like top of funnel content, like outer circle stuff that's going to say, here's what I'm up to, here's how I help with this. And you'll find that, at least in my experience, Keith, if I posted about FBA, um, or similar services to you, there are tons of people doing that, as you know. Uh, that's why you're in business. And so I would just maybe extend your outer circle content for two to three weeks, like a few posts a week, to get people warmed up to the storytelling and you just sharing your personality and what you do, and then move to the regular regular cycle. So, all right, there's a question from Kayla for you, Ashley. So Kayla, this is something I struggle with all the time. <laughs> My biggest piece of advice is do not spend too long on your content because just like anything, I know a lot of business owners have written books. I know, Gabe, that you've written a book before. Whatever you write, no matter what content it is, write it and then have somebody else take a look at it and give their feedback. Because the more that you review it while you're writing, like Gabe said, or you just stare at it, you're going to find things wrong with it. You're going to you know, try to put more information in it than it needs. You're going to confuse people. So if you were able to get that post done in 10 minutes, then try for 10 minutes. If you want to shoot for something faster, shoot for something faster. But spending more than 15 minutes on a post, you're really just going to shoot yourself in the foot because that's that's a really straight line way to just stare at a post for an hour, which I'm sure we've all done, and then end up not even posting it. <laughs> and you don't want to waste your time like that, right? Your guys' time is super valuable. So that's my recommendation there. Great advice, Ashley. All right. I think we got all the questions. So. Anything else on your side, Ashley, or do you want me to wrap it up here? 
Um, you can wrap it up. I can move to the next slide here, but I am just going to hand it off to you. Awesome. So yeah, so thanks, Ashley. Um, that was really valuable and powerful, and it's always a good reminder to me uh, because as entrepreneurs, as founders, as business owners, it's easy to get stuck in our own head and not post like a uh, great question from uh, Kayla there because we can we can really um, you know overthink, overanalyze, and like she said, if you're taking more than like 10, 15 minutes to write a post, you might be making it too long, which I've done plenty of. All of my friends here know that I write really long ass posts sometimes, and they're not, they don't convert, they're just me rant, ranting. Um, and so, if you're taking too long, you're either writing way too long of a piece or you're overanalyzing it. And so, if you can just focus on saying, like, hey, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to set a timer, and, and timers are a miraculous business tool. If nobody here knows that, um, a timer is an amazing tool. We, as a company, talk about a concept called the Pomodoro timer. So, you can look that up. It's, um, I think it's Italian for tomato is what Pomodoro is. Um, but anyway, simple, simple version of it is choose your time length. So say like 15 minutes, set your timer, throw that in front of you with like an app or your phone or something, and then write for 15 minutes. And when you're done, post. Like don't overthink it because also people just want to see you, not some overly polished, overly thought out thing. Social media especially is for having a conversation. Um, so that's really important. As we've been talking about, it's come up already. Um, the reason that I see Shannon's face every day or almost every day is because she's always posting a story. She's always putting something new on her page and she's consistently sending email out and she does that really well. And consistency is absolutely one of the most important things to think about because if people don't see you or hear about you, they will eventually think that you don't exist. And we don't want that in business, right? Because if we don't exist, nobody can call us, nobody can email us, nobody can buy our products. So it's really important to be consistent. And the most effective thing that I've learned there is choose what you can commit to and then grow from there. So there have been seasons where we have done daily email as a company. Um, and we went through some big changes. I don't write all the email anymore, thank God, because it's way better now. Um, and we know that we can be really consistent with a really strong newsletter once a week and we get phenomenal performance out of it because we send it every week and it's same and consistent. So, uh, and then we send other emails on top of that, but that's our main email asset that goes out. So choose the channel that you feel you can be most consistent on and then start there by being consistent at a level that you can do on your worst day, your worst week, the busiest time of year, whatever it is, because you don't want to start and blast a ton out there and then stop because that really just hurts across the board. It hurts your brand. Also, um, there's a lot of research that says brands that are consistent with what they put out there are worth 20% more than those that don't. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to build up, obviously acquire new customers, but if you're even considering exiting sometime in the future, that's something to really keep in mind as well. Um, and so second thing, just a couple things to keep in mind um, is when you're looking at leveraging other platforms, like we kind of touched on this a little bit with consistency, but choose the thing that you're most comfortable with and start there with your consistency, but don't let yourself think, oh, I'm crushing it on Facebook and I'm always gonna crush it on Facebook, or I'm doing amazing with email marketing and it's always gonna work there, or I've been doing direct mail and that's all there ever is. And a lot of people don't do direct mail these days, but some of you do, right? And it's, it's a powerful channel. Any channel, that is established and has gotten results for a large group of people could work for you. But if you try to do too many at once, you won't be able to be consistent. And so the balance is master one channel, but set a clear target of getting into at least two channels that you can be consistent with um, as quickly as possible, meaning like three months or six months or a year. That's quick enough if you really have that consistency and mastery because you never want to let your business depend on a single channel. That's a really, really risky thing. And so start to explore other options, reach out to me or anybody else on the team here. We can give you ideas as well if you're not sure. Um, but make sure that you're able to master one and add another very stable channel because one channel is business suicide. You do not want to be in that position. I've had too many clients experience that and it's super risky. So definitely pay attention to that. Um, that will, as you explore new channels, media channels, again, maybe it's podcasting, maybe it's radio, maybe it's television, maybe it's direct mail, maybe it's Facebook or Google ads, or it's Pinterest, which is a massive traffic channel that people don't talk a lot about right now, or maybe it's Instagram or TikTok, whatever it is, 
as you are consistent, that's going to allow you to learn the algorithms and learn what people like and learn what's going to work for you. Um, and ultimately, that's going to help you grow. And then as you get a following, the only other channel that, again, sometimes doesn't get mentioned, but doing webinars, doing workshops is a great way to connect with people and serve them and help them and let them get to know you and see if you guys are aligned to work together. So those are good channels um, and alternative kind of platforms to look at. And then last thing just to touch on here, um, do's and don'ts of social media, pretty simple stuff that I think we all know, but it's always good for me to get a reminder. And that is do make sure you respond to your comments and engage with people. Um, I also encourage for people not just to respond to your comments, but if you put something out there and let's say Shanna posts something and then Keith just goes and hits like, it's a great idea to message Keith and say, hey, thanks for liking my post, man. I appreciate that. And you can leave it at that. Or if you see him like something again, you can say, man, I really appreciate you liking my stuff. What, what about it is catching your eye? So they don't even have to add a comment for you to um, go ahead and like engage and just thank them for that. I try to, and sometimes on some posts it's hard for me to keep up with, but I try to go comment on every single time my post was shared and say thank you for sharing this because I mean it. And it's also a healthy way to engage and expand your brand. I'd love to somebody know that there's a person behind this post. It's not just some randomly generated thing. So definitely make sure that you are actively engaged and you are having those conversations through comments, through messages. Um, also make sure you utilize hashtags. There are a million options for hashtag research tools, which you can look at. Um, but one simple way to look at hashtag research is find somebody that's really aligned in your space that maybe has a much bigger brand. As an example, say I wanted to be an inspirational speaker and coach like Tony Robbins. I can just go look at his Instagram and see what hashtags he's using that might be relevant to me. I'm not going to copy all his hashtags, but if it says like, you know, be a better you or whatever uh, hashtag, I don't, I'm not making one up obviously. Um, but if I see that on all of his posts, then I will test that and see if it brings people over because hashtags are search terms on social media for those of us that more grew up in the SEO age. So, um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And if you need help with hashtag research, if you need help with your content strategy and that stuff, um, that's why we offer BME Crew. It's built for all stage businesses, so we can really just integrate and kind of fill the gaps or you know where you may need some support. So you can check that out at bmecrew.com. A um, couple things that you don't want to do is don't be overly promotional and only promote your products and services on any channel. Meaning, don't only you know email every day a new sale that you have um, because people are going to get turned off by that. I don't care if you're an econ brand or not mix in all three circles it's really going to be important because um, even sometimes like in a retail type industry like that so no over promotion especially not on social media um, but even in email or other channels um, second thing is really don't ignore your negative comments unless they're just straight trolls and there's no point in engaging those are worth hiding or ignoring but if somebody writes something and they put any level of thought into it they said like well i think that's really stupid because xyz don't just ignore them say man, like, I appreciate you sharing your feedback. Like, I can see it that way. Or tell me more about that. I have a friend who's personally put about $4 million of ad spend into his Facebook ad account as him, he was building his business with his partner. Um, interestingly, their partner's name, they're Todd and Todd, my two Todd friends. Um, but he spent $4 million on Facebook ads in the last three or four years. And when he gets a troll comment on his ads, he goes in and just posts funny gifs and engages back, and it elevates the hell out of his ad. It makes it go way, way up. So I mean, you have to do what's aligned for you, but definitely don't just ignore that stuff. Respond back, um, you know, unless it's completely inappropriate or whatever. Just delete it, obviously. But if it's negative or it's an opportunity to like engage with that person, don't do it from a place of negativity, but do it from a place of curiosity and say, "I'm curious, what made you say that?" Like, or you know. Don't completely ignore those things. And definitely when you get negative reviews or things like that, respond to those. Uh, that's really important to make sure that you are engaging with those. So those are some things to keep in mind as you look at creating content. Remember that, of course, we talked about social media because it's one of your biggest opportunities and channels. And you can you know, get some free leverage there in some senses these days. Uh, but this applies to your email marketing. Um, it applies to video content. It really applies across the board of any kind of type of content that you want to put out there for your business. Um, and so that's something something to keep in mind as well. So as we uh, wrap up here, is there anything else, Ashley, that I missed, or are we in good shape overall? 
No, I think we're in good shape. And then for you guys in BME career, I'll be posting those formulas in there in school. So feel free to keep an eye out on that. And if you guys have any questions about your post, feel free to just reach out on school. We're always there to kind of chat about that. Absolutely. So thanks again for everybody to be here. Um, keep an eye out. We will post, obviously, on social media of our upcoming uh, workshops and in the email list. We have some really exciting things coming out about strategic planning for the rest of the year. Um, some other things as well. And so um, any questions, of course, reach out. Again, thank you, everybody, for being here. This is streamed on YouTube, um, on our Business Marketing Engine channel, on my uh, Facebook profile, on a couple of our business pages, on my LinkedIn profile. So if you want to rewatch it, it's very easy to find there. Um, and if this was valuable, it would mean a lot to me that you would share this with somebody else as well. Um, and also appreciate the, the feedback there, Melissa, that you loved like doing the work in the workshop. We're going to try to do a lot more of that as we can. Um, and yes, thanks. Good question, John. We are going to be sticking at 1 p.m. Eastern. We were testing some different times, but this seems to work the best for everybody across the board. Um, so these will be 1 p.m. Wednesday workshops, and you will have um, an email and update in the next day or two here, John, about the next one that we're having. So appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, thanks for being a part of it today. And as always, reach out if you have any questions.